people coming in that uh, Louisville was really good inside, um, especially with Maisha Hines Allen, and then you know with Mariah Moore on the on the perimeter. The two of them um, having a great year carrying this team, and you know, even though they're young, they're very experienced. And this this is a team that um, is tough to defend in so many ways. They're quick. They're athletic. They can penetrate. They can shoot. They have great post players that guards can get in there and create shots for them. And I thought, I thought in spurts we battled in the first quarter. You know, I thought we held our own. We did a lot of good things handling their pressure. They're trying to disrupt. They create a lot off of their defense. And I thought our players did a nice job of handling that pressure, hitting shots, finding ways to score. And you know, sometimes when we sub and we put different combinations whether because of foul trouble or fatigue, um, we just it changes the whole complexion of the game, and teams tend to make runs on us in that spurt. Um, but you know they're very good. I mean I credit them. Their defense is very good. They challenged us, but honestly, I don't, can't remember the last time in conference we scored 61 points. So you know this week off has been good for us, where we got in the gym, we worked on. It's our skills, we shot the basketball, we did a lot of scrimmaging. And uh, I, I thought Destiny Gibbs and you know, Stacia Carey in the starting lineup was f tremendous uh, for us. But then I thought Destiny Gibbs gave us great minutes off the bench. She has really improved as this season has come along and providing great leadership, toughness, and uh, just a, a competitiveness on the floor for us and a calming factor. So, you know, we would expect her to continue to do that and play more minutes you know, down the stretch here. But, you know, right now, I think the biggest thing is us trying to stay confident because we're seeing some good things in our, in our players. Just we're not a team that has a, a big margin for error. You know, it's very slim, um, our margin for error. So we have to be uh, productive and have multiple players make contributions. And we can't depend on one or two players for us to be successful. You know, we need five players in double figures for us to win games. Do you think that, that message sort of resonates with your players, that the slim margin for error, is that tough to sort of, A, is, is it tough to get them to see sort of positives like the, the 61 points and Destiny coming off the bench and, and that kind of thing after a loss? You know, I, I think what um, the toughest thing is keeping their confidence up is that, you know, because we're not coming away, we're not finding a way to win. Uh, but we are, we feel like we're closing the gap with being able to compete with some of these teams. Uh, obviously, we compete better at home than we do on the road. But you know, we've been in games. We've seen good things happen um, over the course of the game from each player. So it's keeping their confidence high that as we move forward and we, we prepare for our next opponent with Virginia Tech on Sunday is that we have to, re we have to rebound from this game and you know, put this behind us and move forward in that game. Coach, um, another game where you guys had some trouble giving up offensive rebounds. Um, do you attribute that to Louisville's, you know, their length, their athleticism, or has that just been a problem? You know, we coming into this game, we've talked about how physical Louisville is. Um, probably right up, ranked right up there with Florida State, as far as um, being physical, and we can't simulate that. You know, we try. We have practice guys. We go against each other, but. You know, you see how many offensive, re how many defensive rebounds we got that were ripped right out of our hands. Um, you just see them, you know, out muscling us on the block and coming up with offensive rebounds. You know, I think that was a huge difference in the game, is them getting offensive rebounds. You know, sometimes, you know, what I'm seeing too is um, you're, you're you're getting behind, and you know, the hustle plays that you might get in the beginning of the game, we're not getting as the game wears on. Um, you know, just mentally not not being tough enough, or um, you know, getting to those loose balls. I thought that that's really where Louisville um, shined tonight is in the hustle plays. You know, the loose balls, the offensive rebounds, and um, we just we we just didn't match that physicality. You mentioned those spurts where you guys were able to you know put some good runs together tonight, and then things sort of got shaky at times. I mean, is that do you think just a young team sort of? learning to play together with different parts, or what can you sort of attribute that to? You know, I thought when we handled their pressure and we got open looks, you know, when they went to their press, we were able to advance the ball. We got some open looks. 
I thought when we got the ball in half court and we had the, the presence to pull it back out and execute a set, I thought we got good looks when we executed and set good screens. Um, you know, we're not going to hit every shot. I thought we got some open looks that we d weren't able to knock down. Early in the game, we got open looks. We didn't knock down layups. Um, but, you know, we're, we just have to be more efficient. But I thought there were some good things. But then, you know, they turned up the pressure and they started trapping off of, you know, and, we, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say that this team, our team did not come in prepared. We talked about when they're trapping on ball screens, this is how it, you have to come to the ball. And we waited for the ball to come to us. You know, fatigue late in the game. You know, we're waiting for the ball to come to us instead of coming to. We, we put people in, in spots. They're, you know, if they're coming at you and trapping, you're coming to the ball, you're flashing here. These are the options you have. We've talked about all of those things, and we prepared for everything that they threw at us tonight. So I can't say that our players weren't prepared. It's just a matter of making plays and making reads and, and capitalizing on um, when they do trap. Because when we did keep our dribble and we made the extra pass, we got a layup or we got a wide open shot. When we didn't, when we waited for the ball to come to us or we were lazy with it, we turned it over. Do you also think that fatigue could go hand in hand with the communication? Um, I know just hearing the girls on the court, do you think there could have been more communicating with um, going over the ball or you know, fouling, things like that? You know, fatigue. Um, we say shouldn't be a factor. And I don't know how many teams do this, but if our players don't play 15 minutes, they have a cardio workout that they have to do. So they have to, um, just because they have to stay in game shape, because you never know when your number is called, when you will play uh, more minutes. So our players, fatigue shouldn't be a factor, but sometimes when you are playing hard, you need a few minutes. Um, and we lost a timeout when, when uh, we went to quarters you know, you now have one timeout, media timeout, each of the 10 minute quarters. You know, we used to have four, now we have three, unless a coach calls a timeout, and typically that's a 30 second timeout. Um, and if a coach calls one, it goes to a media, so you lose it. So those were built in uh, timeouts that you had and you could count on every four minutes getting a rest. That doesn't always happen right now. And I'm seeing a difference with our team, even though I've liked going to quarters, I am seeing a difference of fatigue being a factor at some times. With, with us not being as deep and playing as many players. Um, but you, you fe fatigue shouldn't be a factor. And then when we went to the zone, I thought when we were um, active and communicating in the zone early on, and you know, I don't, you probably could hear me calling their, call, their plays, what we named them um, going into this game. We knew exactly what they were running, but you know, they hit shots or they were patient and they penetrated. Um, so when they were communicating, I thought it was very effective once we start subbing or fatigue becomes a factor, the communication breaks down and we're not getting closing out the shooters and we, we're, we're not as aggressive um, in, the, in the defense. So communication at both ends is key for us. Coach, back-to-back uh, -back games where Fred's on the floor, uh, it seems like defense is really locking her in, uh, noting her ability to shoot the ball up. Do you feel that that adds pressure on to off offensive weapons such as Stasha and Greta? Um, you know, that's a luxury for them. You know, if you have a shooter who can stretch the defense, as Fred Potvin can, you know, she's had a stretch where she's hitting shots since she has been inserted into the starting lineup, and you will now start to hear opponents, you know, say, identify the shooter. And you'll hear coaches on the other sideline identifying the shooter, knowing where she is. If there was a play tonight, we ran a little flare screen for her. Defense fought over. Stacia caught it, was able to sweep to the basket because now the help's not sitting in her lap. Um, you know, now driving lanes are open. The high-low pass from post to post can be open. Um, she opens up a lot for other players if teams have to key on her. Uh, we still want to be able to create her shots, and that's where our guards have to get better, is being able to create shots for her. We have to allow the offense to work, but we also have to set good screens to get her open, and we also have to have guards who can put the ball in her hands for her to, to capitalize on that split second that she's open to catch and shoot because she is playing with a lot more confidence. Um, there's no hesitation when the ball's right in her hands. If she's in rhythm, she's catching and shooting, and that's what we wanted, um, you know, because she is a threat from three-point line, and, and she makes, she could help make the game easier for everyone else by being able to knock down threes. Not just when you're dealing with a defense sort of as tough as Louisville's, but do you feel like the, the encore leadership is, you know, where you need it to be at, at this point in the season? Um. Well, the leadership has been uh, a struggle for us, and um, 
we had not named captains up until recently. And I finally had the players vote because I wanted to know where they thought their leadership was coming from because I was expecting it to come from certain places. And Fred Potvin and Brenna Wise, as a freshman, are our two captains right now. Um, but the other person who really, to me, has stepped up as a leader is Destiny Gibbs. She's probably our most vocal, along with Brenna, in practice and uh, has, made, has been a difference maker in the last couple of weeks. Even if you maybe weren't as pleased early on in the season, is it nice that Brenna is only a freshman? You got four years of that leadership uh, coming your way? Brenna is special in a lot of ways. Um, she's the complete package. When you talk about, I'm sure when you put her up here in front of you, how she handles herself, uh, always saying the right thing. Um, it's all about team. It's always about winning. Um, when you talk about work ethic, you know, she is the first one in the gym, the last one to leave. She's our hardest worker. She's our most vocal. She's our most enthusiastic on the court. Um, she is the, the, our best student in the classroom. Um, so when you talk about uh, someone that you want to represent your program, and I feel very fortunate that I will have her for four years.